Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time, we have a Metroid creepypasta for the very, very first time, so let's see how it is. This creepypasta begins with a player who recently purchased the Metroid Prime Trilogy for the Nintendo Wii. Uh, if you don't know what the trilogy is, it's basically all three Metroid Prime games into one disc for the Wii, Metroid Prime 1, 2 Echoes, and 3 Corruption. Um, so the player was basically playing through Metroid Prime 2, which, you know, the player said that they hadn't played before, as they sold their GameCube a while back, before the game was released back at the time. So the player was playing, and uh, they were making the, their way through the Aegon Wastes, and as the player played, he or she would experience the game glitching up, and it just kept on getting worse and worse as the player kept on playing. Eventually, the player started hearing echoing sounds within the portals. Yeah, basically, the portals are when you go from the light world to the dark world. And in these portals, sometimes, the player would hear screaming from men, just men, and uh, animals. The player kept playing through the game and switching between the light and dark worlds. And eventually, at one point, when the player was switching between portals, there there is a transition transition animation and during this animation a loud scream was heard from the TV even though the volume was set really low. The, the scream sounded like a man in pain however and finally when the transition was complete the player was transported not into the light world or the dark world but into a very very deformed realm almost as if the light and dark world combined. The player saw bodies of galactic federation troopers and some space pirates and dark aether plants with blood dripping off of them. The player scanned the bodies and noticed that the scanner actually detailed very gruesome deaths and described every single detail, such as legs being clawed and then eventually ripped off and fingers shoved through the eyes into the brain. The, it was very gruesome and the player turned and found, saw this bridge and started to run across it out of curiosity and the player ran into a dome only to notice that a group of Galactic Federation troopers were chained to the wall. There were also bodies dangling off the ceilings, and when they were chained, they, were, they also looked like they were being stretched or something. Like, I mean, how you would see in the beginning of the game, like with the dangling bodies, except these dangling bodies, however, were dripping with blood and had eyes hanging out of their sockets and all this other gruesome stuff. And the player tells us that the graphics look really realistic, even more so realistic than the default graphics in the original game, I guess. Like, when you start off, it was just really out of place. The player received a message from the ship, and the map screen came up, and a loud screech played on the map. Instead of a question mark, like usual, that would show up on the map, all the player saw was a skull and crossbones. Despite, despite this, the player still went to the location, since it's, again, a very, very intelligent idea. As the player headed to the location, he or she came across this Morph Ball puzzle. So the player then decided to just switch into the Morph Ball, but all went wrong here. Samus simply laid on the ground, screaming and crying. She then faced the player in the game, and removed her helmet, and... The face was really horrifying, I mean, it was just mangled and torn up and all this gruesome stuff. Samus began whispering, not just in English, but some combination of English, German, Russian, French, and Italian, and even other languages. Samus began to tug at her legs and eventually bend her body in various ways and even began started to tear, like, even began to tear off her legs. Then the game made the player scan a nearby log. Samus was lying down on the ground, and upon scanning the log, she started screaming, and the scan simply said, please die. Despite how messed up this was, the player laughed, even since it, it just felt like the game was saying this so casually. The player then scanned another log, this time there was no screaming, and upon scanning this log, the player saw a picture of them, except mangled. Then, in the picture, a group of Metroids attached to the head, sucking the head and making it look like a raisin. The player was watching the picture and slightly laughed again, despite how messed up the image was. Fucking sadistic. The player then saw some text which said, I told you nicely, 
You laughed at me, mocked me, you will pay for that. The player then noticed hundreds of bodies falling from the sky. All of these bodies were Galactic Federation troopers, missing their helmets and just, just having mangled heads. Samus looked down at one of the GF troopers automatically, and the player heard some breathing behind her in the game. Breathing behind uh, him or her in the game. And the player could not turn around in the game. The player, like, the player could physically not move around, they were just stuck, so the game, they couldn't, they couldn't do anything in the game anymore, it's, it's just happening automatically. And finally, a message box came up, asking, scared yet? Yes or no? The player wanted to say no, but decided to, decided to just say yes out of curiosity's sake. Again, another extremely intelligent idea, I mean, you know, people would think of turning off the game, but nope, keep on moving forward, and, okay. Not gonna lie, I would have done the same. But anyways, the player then heard a laugh, possibly from this screaming man that was heard earlier on, and the game returned in the main menu. Since then, the player was just too scared to do anything and isolated themselves from everyone else. The player didn't even touch the game and even loaned it to a friend, despite their friend having no problems with this game or anything. The player tells us that they watched many horror movies and games as well as reading several creepypastas, but this just happened to me. This just happened to be too much. Okay, <laughs> this was the very first Metroid creepypasta we've ever done. It was a little short, but, you know, whatever. First of all, I'll just say this, it's not the best creepypasta, but it wasn't bad, and was definitely good for the first Metroid one we've ever done, right? A lot better than the Earthbound attempt we've done. But, whatever, this is Metroid, so... In my opinion, Metroid's one of those games that contains the perfect material for writing a creepypasta. It's got perfect atmosphere and characters. I mean, let, let's think about it. The SAX from Metroid Fusion, we've got Ridley. Hell, we've got Metroids, we've got Italian 4, we've got everything. Think about it. There are some problems, however, such as, you know, the creepypasta happening extremely fast. I mean, this is another complaint that I've had, that I've been making recently. It's just, it never gives you any time to build up anything. I mean, if we read it closely right from the beginning, we know that the player buys a game, plays it, and it, it goes from buying the game, and immediately going to all the, holy shit, there's some creepy stuff happening, oh my god, fuck my life, it's all that. There's nothing building up, I mean, the player tells us that there's some glitches happening, that's it. It would be much better if you told us what the glitches were like and how, like, how badly it was just escalating. I mean, I'll give you an example. Say you're playing Slenderman, and in the first ten seconds, all the time, Slenderman pops up right in front of you. It's not scary anymore. It's just pointless. It's like there's nothing building up to anything. The entire point of that game is to just build up this atmosphere. That's all it is. But if it just breaks that, then there's no point in playing it. That's all. Another problem I have is the ending. It it just ended. I mean, that's it. The player plays this game, sk sk all that happened. I mean, after all this, this creepy stuff that they see lending the game off, they just decide in the end to write, oh my god, I secluded myself, no one, I never contact anyone, that's it. I'm too scarred from this. Okay, but, like, is that it? And that, that's all it did. It didn't, like, tell you any ending, like, but what happened to the... I mean, it's just, it just abruptly just finished. I mean, that's it. The player... They didn't even give us a reason. They just told us they watched a lot of horror movies and all that stuff, and this was just too much for them. That's not a good enough explanation for the end. That's really all I have. I mean, it should have just been more in-depth or just a better ending, in my opinion. But, yeah, those are the main issues I have. Uh, there are some cliches in this. I mean, come on. Buying... I'll give you guys a little comment question. What way do you think people should get creepypasta games? Like, how should they get hacked games? Because we've seen everything. People go on eBay and buy games, or they buy a like used game in the store and it turns out to be haunted. I mean, what do you think we could do now? Um, that's really all I gotta say. This does this does borrow like you know several elements from other creepypastas, such as Team Fortress 2 with the dangling bodies. But whatever. I mean. Th that stuff is in the game, however, and, you know, I'm gonna overlook that, but it's it's worth mentioning. So, 
the best part, the good thing about this, and, and it's really good, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it feels like I'm ripping on it, but I'm not. The good thing about this was just the descriptive nature of it. I mean, it, it just, it was really well described. I mean, with Samus ripping off her own leg, it, it, it was just, you could you could picture it going on. That's how it looked like. The player's face mangled up, shrinking. You you could kind of see all that because it was really well described. If you go read through the creepypasta, links are in the description below. And um, that's really all I have to say. It is a good creepypasta, and I do recommend you guys to go read it. The link is in the description below. I know I said that, but it's there. Just go read it. I recommend you guys to read it. Um, again, if you want to get featured on the show, try writing a Metroid creepypasta. I mean, I'm still looking for some Earthbound ones. There are some really good ones that got sent to me, so I'm going to do some of them. And, uh, yeah. So that's really all I have to say. If you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And, uh, I'm actually going to be moving this weekend, so this video is actually done a little earlier than expected. It's just uploaded on that date. I'm actually moving, so... I won't have internet till Thursday, but hopefully when Thursday comes I will be doing some Aoni and there is some more stuff about Aoni that I have to tell you. It's it's pretty secretive, so I'll tell you on Thursday, but yeah, if you like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe. This is me Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers and I'm out.